Hi guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. I'm Chanel. I'm Roxy. And we're here today to discuss with you guys some important things that we felt very necessary to, to bring to the table and shed some light on it. Yeah. So what are we getting into first? Well first, how was your day? Life's been good, you know what I'm saying? Life's been good for her. Okay, as you can see, I have an empty stack. I don't have the dollars, and Laura does. But yeah, but we're gonna talk to you guys about how to get these dollars and avoid making certain mistakes. Yeah, let's just get right into it. Thank you for asking me how my day was. My day was great, by the way. It's been going good. <laughs> As you can tell, Laura has no manners. Parents taught her nothing. My day is going great. So yeah, first things first, how to avoid making business mistakes. What are your thoughts on that? I think the best thing to do is trust your gut. That's the number one thing in my opinion. Yeah, trusting your gut is very important. We know what we want for our businesses and how we want our businesses to run. And we have all passions for those things. So it's important to trust your gut. I think yeah. that's like, the top thing i agree with you on that another oh, yeah. thing is respect. respect i think a lot of people come to us unprepared mm -hmm. don't come to us half-assed that's true so come to us with respect as you yourself respect yourself also if it gut yeah. is telling you that that person's not a little bit a little bit wonky then definitely say your nose to it but some opportunities may come and things might be going the way it needs to go and things happen there are things you can't control that happens yeah i agree with you your your top two which kind of segues into me and what i think internally how you should avoid mistakes like, don't be afraid to fail yeah so it goes back to the fact that you may take these opportunities but you don't even know if it's going to happen or not because as i just said like things happen, right? But don't be afraid to fail because failure is important for your journey into being successful. When do you draw the line? Between failure? That's a great question. We are the only ones that could ask ourselves these hard hitting questions like, okay, am I doing this right? Is this really what I want to do? Do I have a passion for this? Is this gonna work for me? And these questions, you will have to answer it honestly for yourself. And yeah. if, you, if you answer it honestly for yourself, then you know that line. Whereas, like, okay, you know what? I failed enough. Maybe I should move into something else. Mm -hmm. And not saying that you should just quit on the entire idea of being an entrepreneur, but Maybe there's something else that works for you. Yeah. Don't be afraid to fail. Another thing is like get organized. There are times you're gonna have to wear many hats. Oh, and there are also times that you may come into your office if you're working from home, you may open up your laptop and you have a ton of emails and things that you need to handle. But instead of that making you feel stressed out and go crazy, it's very important to have to do lists, like a task for the day which helps you get organized. And also like you don't have to complete everything on your to-do list on that subject. We're definitely gonna have a list of things that could help you get organized in our blog post. And there's so many different apps that help you stay on track. I'll definitely provide some project management yeah. tools in regards to like project management and being organized. Or can you give us an example of how you learned how to delegate? Because I know it's not an easy thing. Oh, it's definitely not yeah. an easy thing. I think that with my publication, like, we've probably tried every project management tool you could think about, right? What's your publication called? Artsy Magazine. But we have tried every single project management tool you could think about. And one thing that I've learned in the process of doing that is a simple fact that your team also have to be organized themselves. Yes. Because like I could be super organized and my team is just not checking those project management tools. And that puts all of the projects and deadlines that we have on the back burner. So you have to get into a habit of doing it. What were your growing pains in regards to delegation? Like when you first started, did you find yourself trying to do everything? It's because I started a company and this was like my baby. You don't want anyone to touch your baby, hold your baby, babysit your baby, and know you need the fucking hell. You need the help, but you wanna protect that thing so badly that you end up taking control of every single thing and micromanaging every single thing. In my situation, I hired too many people too quickly, and it was so hard for me to manage every single person, and every person had their own idea of what they would want this publication to be okay where it, it made things difficult but i had to really step back look at things look at what's going on and i had to let some people go unfortunately mm -hmm. i had to take like, control of what's mine and the culture that i wanted to build which 
it was a sad thing at first, which gave me more work. Yeah. <laughs> but it made me enjoy it a little bit more. So now if I need to hire editors at large, I know exactly how I could delegate the work for them. Don't have to micromanage. Yeah, delegation so that, is hard. Delegation is hard because everyone has their own perspective on what needs to be done. And then there's a really thin line in respecting someone's perspective and hurting your feelings. Yeah. When I was first learning how to delegate, I had a large team when I first got out of college. Of, I don't know, maybe like 100 people. Yeah. And I was 23 years old. Yeah. And in that 100 people, a lot of those people had 20 years in the game. So right. they're looking at me like, who the hell are you? Right. And it was a little bit of earning their respect. And I don't want to say being a dick, but being yeah. a dick, you have to do a job. Yeah. Let's get it done. Let's figure it out. And also not figuring it out for everybody. For instance, for our interns, they're amazing, by the way, Lauren and Sydney. But when they first started working with us, there was just a lot of questions that they could figure out themselves. So I learned that telling somebody to figure it out gives you time to do what you gotta do yeah. and actually lead yeah but it makes them grow as well yeah it forces them to grow it forces them to grow and also gives them independence one of the things that is so important is when you're building a team and having the people on your team that has that leadership mindset as yeah. well like you want them to know exactly what they want and they themselves could inspire you to change some things or learn something. Yeah. I like the fact that other people come on board and be like, this is something that I've learned or I've read. And it kind of puts me in a position to go, okay, let me get myself educated on that a bit, which is one of the reasons why I love working with you, of course. Cause like there are times that you come in and you're just like, mm, I get that, but this is something that I know where it sits me back. Okay, let me go read that too and get an understanding because you want smarter people on your team too. So that's like really important in avoiding business mistakes for sure and learning through mistakes. <laughs> like I make mistakes every day to be quite honest. So being an entrepreneur is really and truly just like jumping off a, a cliff and like figuring out how to build a parachute on your way down. One more thing, like finding your right market and target audience because that helps you to know what work you need to do because you're gonna be working smarter, not harder. Yeah. Then you have people who are able to communicate with you in the comment sections, through emails, letting you know what they need or what they think you're doing that's not good enough. There are some comments that's probably really gonna sit you back as well and be like, oh, maybe I should try this with my business. So on your end though, when it comes to being a DJ on an external level, do you avoid making this business mistake, not just a DJ, but also as a young black woman running a company? I know I have $100,000 sitting in front of me right now. <laughs> but believe it or not, I do make mistakes. <clears throat> of course. I'm honestly navigating that right now. Right. And it's hard because we work during the day and 80 to 90% of DJing is not in front of people. I spend hours organizing my music, getting sets ready, and that takes up a chunk of my time as well. Yeah. And then you have to network. Right. You have to go out at night right till two in the morning and meet djs right. gain fans all of that which is tiring so honestly you just have to push through you i push feel through. you on that so as we speak about the whole idea of finding your market and how you having to network and create the things that you're creating how do you set your goals and how do you make them realistic i write them down they don't have to be like Hey, I'm going to make a million dollars this right. year. No, it needs to be in three months. I want to make two songs, make two mixtapes, right. get one gig. It, it can be like yeah. small goals. Yeah. You look at the end of the year and you've amassed something bigger than what yeah. you possibly thought. Another thing is when I do make goals, I'm open to changing them. With Jeff Bezos as a person isn't somebody that I would necessarily look to. <laughs> yeah. um, I am a fan of how he started his company right. and his company's ethos and the culture that he created. It's always day one at his company. Right. Which means that he allows new ideas. 
Amazon started as an online platform to sell books. books. Yeah, all those ideas were not his. Right. And if something didn't work, he was like, "I'm good. He's right. not gonna waste his time and energy on something that's not working." I forgot the exact term, but essentially, it's like some people put in so much time and effort into something. And they think they need to keep putting that time and effort into that thing that's not working. Right. For me, it's, yeah, I do have a goal, but if it's not working at a certain point, it's cool. It's being realistic and it also goes back to measuring your success mm -hmm. and being honest with yourself. That is always okay to go to the drawing board. Even when I do issues for my publication, after we're done with an issue, I'm able to see mistakes that we have made during the process of making that issue that I am ready to go to the drawing board. Like, okay, we're not going to do this for the next one. So every issue ups the other. Yeah. You're not always going to be married to ideas. I don't, that's one thing. Yeah. I like, don't, like don't, being married to don't ideas. be married to ideas, oh. especially if you see that I didn't work out as great as it could have. It's okay to go back to your drawing board and be like, you know what? this could be changed, which is important to have either mentors or people around you that's gonna be very honest with you as well. And be like, you know what, this ain't it. Like, yeah. Maybe you should do this and this instead. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that as well. It's important to be realistic with your goals for sure. It's also very important to create a business plan for yourself and for your company. Now you will share the investors because then you will have short-term and long-term goals. Yeah. So your short-term goals will be able to help you achieve your long-term goals. And sometimes, again, you have to go back and be like, you know what, that's probably not a goal anymore mm -hmm. uh, and change up certain things in your business. But really and truly, uh, my number one thing is like not running to build a team right away. Really build a foundation and a structure for your company. Know what you want for your company. Know the culture of your company, just like Jeff Bezos. Like really and truly externally, it's really just knowing who you're involving into your business and into your company. Yeah. And if you start off with a friend, it's okay to put your friends on the contracts. Well, I know it's like a big taboo. It's like, don't do business with your friends. I personally think it's a great thing to do business with your friends. If I'm doing business with someone, like you're my friend, yeah. and if for some reason this doesn't work out and us being business partners, doesn't mean we're not gonna be friends anymore. But it's like also important to set your boundaries with your friends when it comes to business. Yeah. and. You have to prioritize sometimes yeah. because yeah. I have worked with friends and business was affecting our friendship. My friendship mattered more. Right. So I thought it was important. Let's not work together. Right. Like, yeah. No, um, that happens. That happens. Yeah. And so you have to prioritize. Well, it. I think when you don't put people on the contracts, it really, it, mm -hmm. it makes it like a free for all. They think it's okay to do the things that you would normally do if you're just hanging out as friends. Yeah. So, so for me, I, I encourage people to do business with friends, but contracts are important. They're extremely important. If someone <laughs> sees the company growing and they see what they could benefit from it, it becomes a very nasty thing. What are your thoughts on that? I'm agreeing with everything that you just <laughs> said. Uh, absolutely. Right. Make sure that you put things in writing. One thing that I would like to talk about in regards to external mistakes is not embracing external trends. Because people don't like change. Change is really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. The world does not evolve around your company. Exactly. Exactly. Some people are like, oh, I don't like this NFT stuff. I don't like the metaverse. Yeah. I don't like this. I, it's like, cool that you don't like it, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And you're going to be in the dust and trying to figure things out when it's a little bit too late. That's like a red flag for me. If mm -hmm. someone is not willing to be open-minded and get out of their box, they're not the one. It's a turn-off, actually. Another red flag is when a client or somebody that you're doing business with takes so long to make a decision oh yeah. oh my gosh to me you're not serious like, yeah i at this point if i don't see forward movement yeah i literally put it on the back burner it's not gonna happen yeah because some people again it goes back to respect some people don't respect your time yeah and they don't respect what you have going on so they take forever we're not, not chasing it. you down. Yeah, that's, I don't think anyone should chase anyone down no. either. If you're ready to do business, you're going to do, do it. Just do it. And the right people are going to come to you and you don't have to go to them. So what are like your top three books you think that, or self-help books that you would recommend for reviewers? 
to read. Actually, I do have a book called My Life in Five Years, a self-help book essentially that you write yourself. Oh, nice. And it goes from your business to your family to your relationship. And it's a full book. Nice. And you go and you write down all the things. So it's like journaling. It's journaling times 50 because yeah. it really makes you put down some concrete goals. I have two of them and I write them in a pencil right. or erasable ink so I can go back and if shit changes, I ain't in no relationship anymore. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to get married in two years. You know? Right. And it's cool to look back and be like, damn, like <laughs> growth. Right. So there's that. And then an article that I think everybody should read, whether or not you hate Amazon or not. It's Amazon Explain the Day One Mentality. And it's all about Jeff Bezos and how he built his culture. Business culture is super important. So basically it takes you out of that mentality that you need to have one goal and not change it. If that's something that Amazon did, it would not know about Amazon. In the beginning of building a business, it's awkward. Oh yeah. It's super awkward. Cause it's you're like trying awkward. different things. Some things stick, some things don't. Yeah and they're not failures but it's just awkward so the hurdles yeah the hurdles and it's also important to know how to get over those hurdles super important because you can get really down on yourself with those hurdles that come your way you definitely can yeah so i think every day that you wake up yeah. it's day one but also you need to do it you said i want to do air talks you said okay i put up some lights yeah put up our phone and here we are we're yeah doing it, we're you know? doing it and true customer obsession you're not going to create a need right. that doesn't even make sense somebody that has a need and you need to fill that void yeah that's why it's important to know your market and your target audience yeah because once you know that you know exactly what you're marketing your product or your services to exactly so yeah and jeff bezos said even when they don't know yet Mm -hmm. Customers want something better. Mm -hmm. And your desire to delight customers will drive you to invent on their behalf. Yep. And then you have the high velocity decision making. Yeah. And Jeff Bezos says, day two companies make high quality decisions, but they make high quality decisions slowly. And not yeah. letting your business get bogged down by procedures at the cost of missing opportunities. Um, I have one more, I forgot. The seven habits of highly effective people. Mm. Essentially, the author teaches you how to work with people that are ineffective mm. and how to spot those ineffective people mm. as well. That's really good. Oh yeah, it's, so, it's one of the best books I've ever read. I okay. probably need to go back and read it again. So those are your lists? That's my list, what are your words? Oh, so I love self-help books. Mm -hmm. For me, it's important to read those type of books. Um, I know some people are like, eh, they don't like self-help books, but I don't always read it all together in one sitting. I come back to it like having a Bible for entrepreneurs. So my my three are The Four Agreements. I love that book and I think it helps you both internally as a person being a better person and helps you know how to be a leader and how to build a business in that sense. Because at the end of the day, if you're not a good person, you're not going to have a successful business because it might work out at the moment, but in the future, shit's going to hit the fan for you. So it's always good to be a good person have a good heart, do things in the right way, and have intentions on why you're doing things. Think and Grow Rich, <laughs> that's a really good book. And my favorite, ultimate favorite, the best book I have ever read in my entire time of starting a company is Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. It's, it's quick reads also, good to go back to it because it's just so amazing. It teaches you good ethics, treating people right. It's super important it will build a better success for you. So those are my three books. Again, those links would be in um, our blog post. So you can definitely go back to that and read those. All right, um, good shit. Good shit. As a business owner, this might just be a reminder for you of things that you probably lost your way in building a business because that happens. I've lost my way a couple of times while running a business and forgetting certain things, but it's always good to go back, look at things, read things, hear it again. And again, this is like really things that we've dealt with personally as running companies, working for companies, all of these things. We have learned these things and we are happy to share those things with you. And speaking of sharing. Oh my God. I would like to give you $30,000 <laughs> for being such a great person and a great friend 
and business partner. All right, say less, 30,000, okay. Prada, Balenciaga, Bottega, I'm coming through, I'm lying. Thank you so much for watching us. Go ahead and follow us or air dot agency on all our social network twitter instagram tiktok is a little weird because i spelled it wrong so i'll make sure i put it in there they won't let me change it i have to wait 30 days that's a little tricky but i don't know i'm done but I'm it's tired. all air agency though follow us get to know more about us read over stuff we're, we're trying out here and we're trying for you guys but yeah thank you again